This is the lesson for the first part of lesson 9.5 on permutations and combinations. Okay, first of all, permutations are arrangements of things in a specific order. So when order matters, we are talking about a permutation. So when we talk about words and the arrangements of letters, that's a permutation because if we take the letters in cat, how many different ways can we arrange that? So let's try. So we can do C-A-T, of course. We can do A-C-T, T-A-C, C-T-A, A-T-C, and T-C-A. And so, of course, all of those in English don't make a word, but we can arrange those differently so the order that we put the letters in does matter. So that would be a permutation of letters. So there are a total of six different unique arrangements or permutations of the letters C, A, and T. Example two, how many ways can you arrange the letters in math? And so you can try to list them all, but the more letters you get, obviously, the more different arrangements that you can have. So there's another way that we can do this. And there's a couple different names that this is called, but um, one way I like to think about it is I think about, well, there's four letters, so I'm going to have four slots. And in the first slot, I have four numbers to, or four letters to choose from. So I've got four choices. Now, once I use up one of those choices, then for the next slot, I only have three choices. And then I have two letters left. And then for the last slot, I have no choice. There's only one choice left because there's only one letter left. So actually, if you multiply all of these numbers together, four times three times two times one, that's 24. And that's actually how many ways you're going to be able to arrange the letters in the word math. Um, this is called a couple different things, like I said, fundamental counting principle is one of them, but it's another way to do a simple permutation. Um, you may know this already, but another way that we could write 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 7 factorial. And so when you have 7 and an exclamation point, that's what it means in math. It's not just an excited 7. So 4 factorial is how many ways you can arrange the letters in the word math. For cat, you have three choices and then two choices and then one choice. So that's 3 factorial, which is equal to 6. And so factorials are a way that we shortcut instead of having to write everything. But the way that you say that is 7 factorial. That's the way you say that, and then that's what it means. Okay, for example four, you have 10 songs on a playlist. How many ways or arrangements can you listen to three of them? So if I only want to listen to three of the songs, how many different ways can that happen? So if you think about it, I have three different spots. So for the first spot, I am going to take my 10 songs, I'm going to choose one. So I have 10 choices for the first song. Now that I've listened to one, how many choices do I have for the second song? I have nine. And then for the third song, I only have eight choices left. And then I'm done, I'm not going to listen to any more songs. So if I multiply those together, 10 times 9 times 8 is 720. There are 720 ways that I can listen to three songs. And so another way that we talk about that is we say it's a permutation of 10 objects, because there's 10 songs, taken three at a time. And that's how many ways I'm going to set them up. And so there's a mathematical definition for a permutation of n objects taken r at a time. And so down here in this box, you see that. And so we write it with this little n subscript and then a p and then a subscript of r. And so the way that we write that, it's equal to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. And so for example, 10 objects taken three at a time would be written like 10 p3. And so we would say that that's equal to 10 factorial over 10 minus 3 is 7 factorial. And so I'll talk about how to do this on a calculator first, but you do need to be able to do this without a calculator and understand what this is. And there will be te test questions to check to see that you know that. So 10 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over, and then we've got 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So think about what you know about math. You know, you can cancel all of those because they're all factors. So you're just left with 10 times 9 times 8, which is 720. Another way that you can do that is you can also write, if you know that you're going to have 7 factorial on the bottom, you can say 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial over 7 factorial, and then just cancel that. 
So we use permutations when order matters, and depending on how many things we want to set up, that's where we're going to get this second number right there. So another example, how many ways can you choose a president and a vice president from a group of 15 people? So in this one, the order matters because one of them will be president, one will be vice president. So if you and your friend are chosen, if, one, if you're president and your friend is vice president, that's a different arrangement than if your friend is president and you're vice president. So order does matter here. And so we are talking about permutations. So I'm going to take 15 people and I'm going to choose two of them. And so that's how we would write the problem. 15 permutation 2 or 15 P2. And so I want you to write out what that is. So go ahead and pause it and see if you can remember how to write that out. Just look at the previous example we did. Okay, what you should have done is say 15 times 14 times 13 times, and then you're going to do 12. Um, but I can just stop with 13 factorial because on the bottom I'm going to have 15 minus 2 factorial, or in other words, 13 factorial. So this is going to cancel there. So how many ways can you choose you and or two people to be president and vice president? And so that's going to be 210 ways. That's 15 times 14. Okay, next, example six. How many ways can you arrange the letters in the word Ohio? Now this is kind of like the question that we had before with math and cat. But the thing that's different is we have two O's. Now if I wrote, if this was, you know, the first O and the second O, what if they switch places? Is that a different arrangement? Think about it. If I switch those two O's, are you going to know the difference? They're all capitals. There's no way you'd be able to tell. So we actually have some duplicates here. And so if we have a possible duplicate situation, we're going to have to appro approach this a little bit differently. So to eliminate duplicate products, what you're going to do is you're going to take n factorial. So back up where we did the math. So if we go back to that question um, where we did math and we did 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, we just did 4 factorial. There were no duplicates there. So in order to eliminate duplicates, we're going to take that n factorial. So there's four letters in the word Ohio. So we're going to take 4 factorial. But we have two that are duplicates, or we have two numbers that we would say are duplicates. So we're going to say divided by how many duplicates there are. So we're going to say divided by 2 factorial. So that's 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 2 times 1. So that's only going to be 12 ways you can arrange the words or the letters in the word Ohio. So when you have a duplicate situation, that's how you need to approach that. So that's going to be something that will come up. So let's try another one. Example 7, how many ways can you arrange the letters in the word basketball? So if you look at that word, it's obvious that you have some repeats. So first of all, count how many letters are in the word basketball, and there's 10. So we're going to write 10 factorial. Now look at how many duplicates you have. I have two Bs, I have two Ls, and I have two As. So I have duplicates, a lot of them. So what I'm going to write is I'm going to write 2 factorial for the Bs, 2 factorial for the As, and 2 factorial for the Ls. And so that will eliminate all the duplicate situations. So I'm going to have 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Sorry, sometimes the dots don't show up when I do them. Okay, over and then 2 times 1, 2 times 1, 2 times 1. And so now I'm just going to simplify this. And so like I said, you do need to be able to do this without a calculator. Um, I'm just going to say this 2 will cancel with that, that and then these 2 will cancel with the 4. So what I have left is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 and then times 3. Now I don't necessarily expect you to do that without a calculator, but you should be able to set up the problem. And like I said, I've got ways to ask you the question so that I can tell if you can do that or not. So you can put 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 3 in your calculator. And you should get 453,600 ways that you could arrange um, the letters in the word basketball, and that's quite a lot. Okay, number eight, try this one, pause the video, and how many ways can you arrange the letters in the word Mississippi? Okay, so you should have counted up the letters in the word Mississippi. There are 11, so we're going to start with 11 factorial, and then you're going to look for your duplicates. There are four S's, there are four 
I's and there are two P's. And so those are all of my duplicates. Now, since you're writing it out, it's probably easier to write out all of the numbers because then you can see what you can cancel and what you can't. So four factorial, I'm gonna write that underneath the four factorial because that'll make it easy to cancel that part out. The other four factorial, I'm just gonna write it over here. And then the two factorial is just a two. So I like to kind of spread them out so I can see easily like what I'm gonna cancel out. So the four, three, two, one, I can cancel that out. The four and the two, I'm gonna cancel with the eight. The three and the two, I'm gonna cancel with the six. Now, of course, there's other ways you can look at that, but it's the result's gonna be the same. So I'm gonna have 10 or 11 times 10 times nine times seven times five. And that's what I'm gonna put in my calculator. So because I have so many duplicates, it really cuts down on the ways that the word is gonna look different if I rearrange my letters. So it's still quite a few ways, but because of all the duplicates, if I just swap these two S's, nobody's gonna know the difference. So the next question, we're not talking about words anymore, but it's really the same idea. How many ways can you plant 11 flowers if you have four red, five yellow, and two purple? So if we take the four red flowers and then pretend that those all look exactly the same. And we have two purples, and then we have five yellows. So if we were to plant these, now granted, they all might look a little bit different, but if you were to plant these, if you put this yellow in place of that yellow, is anybody gonna know the difference? If you change these two reds, their places, is anybody going to know the difference? And the answer is no. Nobody's going to know the difference there. It's like there's a yellow flower, there's a red flower. And that's really the only distinction. So when I go to plant these, how many ways can you do it? We're going to do the exact same thing as we did with the words. So I have a total of 11 flowers. So I'm going to take 11 factorial. How many duplicates do I have? I have four reds. I have five yellows and I have two purples. And so that's the math that I'm going to do with that. So again, we're just writing all this out. At the end of the lesson, I'll talk to you about calculators, but right now I want you to be writing this out so that we can understand like what's happening with the numbers, because if you don't understand why you're doing things and doing it on a calculator doesn't really help you with your understanding. Okay, the five times two, I'm gonna cancel that with a 10. Um, the three times two, I'm gonna cancel with a six, and then the four, I'll cancel with the eight, and it will leave me a two. So I'm gonna have 11 times nine times two times seven times five. So put that in your calculator, and I'm getting 6,930. So that's how many ways you can plant your 11 plants and have a different looking arrangement. Okay, for the last question in this first part of the video, Let's talk about circular objects. So I want you to imagine sitting around a round table. And the reason we're doing a round table is because if you have a rectangular table and somebody's sitting there, that's different than if they're sitting on the side. But on a circular table, it doesn't matter because there's no head of the table or anything like that. So if you have this person sitting here next to this person next to this person and everybody gets up and rotates, it's exactly the same arrangement. Okay, so it doesn't matter, it's just where you are in the circle. So if you have you sitting there, and then the next person, the next person, and so on, and everybody gets up and rotates one, you have exactly the same arrangement, like everybody's in the same order, so it doesn't matter. And so really you're just eliminating um, one of the possibilities there. So really, there's only seven other seats that you can sit in. And so you're gonna just do eight minus one factorial. And so when you're doing circular objects, the formula for that is n minus one factorial. And that eliminates repeating the same thing. And so how many ways can eight people sit around a circular table? It's gonna end up being seven factorial. So that's seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. Okay, we're gonna talk really quickly before we get to combinations, and we'll do that in the other video, but before we get to that, let's talk about calculator. And so in your calculator, if you're doing a graphing calculator, TI-83 or 84, 
If you look in the math menu, and you go over to PRB for probability menu, you'll notice that number four has a factorial button. So exit out of there, and if you wanted to do eight factorial, you would type in eight, and then you would go to your math menu, and then you would go to probability menu, and then you would choose number four, and that would give you eight factorial, and then your calculator will do that. So that's one way that you can do factorial, especially if it's a longer number and you don't want to type all the numbers in. Sometimes it's more steps to actually do the factorial key on the calculator. For the permutations, if you wanted to do 10P3 like that, the way that you're going to type that in your calculator is you're going to do 10, and then you're going to go to your math menu, and then you're going to go to your probability menu, and then you're going to choose number 2, which says NPR, and then you're going to type in 3. And so if you do that and then say enter, then it will figure out what 10 permutations or permutation of 10 things taken 3 at a time is. You can see that there's also a, a C NCR, and we're going to talk about that, that in the next video. One thing you will be tested on is do you know the difference of you know which formula is which. So you will have to know that. So that's why I don't really want you to go to your calculator until you really know what to do without your calculator. So we'll pick up this lesson in the next video.